I'm Realtor Deb Tomorrow, and this is At Home in Bloomington, brought to you by Karen Russell, Ruoff Home Mortgage. We profile the people, places, and resources that make Bloomington Bloomington and help you live your best life at home in Bloomington. Hello and welcome to At Home in Bloomington. I am your host, Realtor Deb Tomorrow, joined as always by the lovely Miss Karen Rastel, best damn lender in the state of Indiana. Hello. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. Awesome. 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 Uh, it's We're recording this in September. It is a glorious September day that should put everyone in a good it's mood. It's a right? beautiful day out. It is Sunshine, gorgeous. little breeze. It's almost sweater weather. I will I have a light that. sweater on. I, I could take it off, but I could also tolerate leaving it on. I saw a meme the other day that said, this is a time of year where you regret wearing a sweater in the morning, like by afternoon. Mm-hmm. And that was me on mm-hmm. Monday. Yeah. It was so cold. It was 53 degrees the other morning. Yeah. I was like, I'm wearing this sweater. Yeah. And then I was sweating by the, by noon. So good stuff. Well, do you remember a couple episodes ago, we had um, Michael White with cats on. Yes. That was a fun episode. Yes, it was. And um, more off the air. We had some good conversations yes, off the air. Yes, But anyways, <laughs> uh, we actually, on that episode, because I know you don't know who today's guest is, but on that episode, we talked about today's guest. Oh, did we? We did. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. The, the, the no. wheels start turning in your head. It's, it's, it's not Jay and Beyond the Rocks. Okay. Okay, we talked a lot about that. Mm. Um, but no, what we talked about was how there were so many government meetings that are covered by cats. I can't remember now, but it was like a couple hundred a month or something crazy. I'm making that number up, but it's my show. I can do that. Um, but that it can get overwhelming to stay informed because if you really want to be informed, you feel like you got to watch all these government meetings. Right. And so they had a great program available on cats to sort of boil it down for us. Is that ringing a bell? Yes, it Yes. Okay. And then it was like, if you wanted more information, you then you could go back and, and watch the, right. the full right the full meeting. Right. So this so this is ringing a bell. So speaking of bell, did you know that our guest, and by guest I don't mean the person necessarily, but the entity okay. that she is representing, first launched in 1993 with the sound of an ancient gong resonating over the airwaves. No, but that would be awesome. Yeah. So so, a, and I you, can hear it in my head. Right. I, exactly. I hear a gong, but. Any any thoughts? I no thoughts. So that show that we were talking about that broadcasts on cats is called Cats Week. Okay. And I don't know if you remember the story or not, but it's a joint venture between cats and WFHB. I do. Uh, I do. Okay. Yeah. So we are welcoming today Emily Jackson, who's a board president and a DJ at WFHB, is a community radio station. So welcome. Thank you. Did so I much get most of that me. right? That's it. absolutely right. I right. was very said very sweetly about the gong. That, yeah, that gong belonged to Herman Wells. I know. I love that um, Herman is. You know, Doctor Wells is coming back as he's sort of a thread through some of our shows because he's oh, just bet. done so many things um, for the community. Oh, yeah, um, and and so he was really a proponent. So maybe you could talk to us a little bit about how WFHB got started. Um, I have lots of questions, and I'm, I'm not really sure where to start. But, okay, yeah, I can yeah. give you like a brief history of the okay, major perfect, milestones. Perfect. It was discussed back in 1975. Which about, is crazy to me. I know it is, and radio was very different then, but this idea that local radio, like local bands, could get on the radio, it was impossible because mm. there wasn't those kind of stations available. So, you know, the idea kind of floated around, and then in the 80s, a lot of work was done, even before computers, the engineering required to figure out and work with the FCC mm-hmm. about starting a community radio station. And so I was on the board back in 1987. You know, it didn't go on the air until 93. I know. But there, the work was was happening. And uh, our founder, Major Mover, one of them is Brian Carney. And he did a lot of community outreach mm-hmm. and fundraising. Mm-hmm. And because he knew Herman Wells... Then he got assistance in meeting Cecil Waldron, okay. who was a local person who, through family money, wanted to honor her family and the family name. And that's why the, the Ivy Tech Waldron Arts yeah. Center is named after Waldron family. Okay. Because that was first the Bloomington Area Arts Council, yeah. and then Ivy Tech got it. And the radio station has the Fire Bay. Yeah. Hence, WFHB Firehouse oh, Broadcasting. But what yes. was amazing to me was the, I don't know, to me it's a story of perseverance because it took 18 years for the first broadcast. 
Yeah, it did. And it was, people were committed. Jeffrey Morris was one of those very early, early proponents, Richard Fish and uh, Jim Mannion. And um, another guy, I'll think of his name. Is, um, I'll think of it. Yeah. Minute. But there were some people who, who stuck with it. Yeah. And and why were those people so passionate? Because that's a lot of passion to stick with something for 18 well, years. Well, it's sort of, and it kind of came and went. Like, oh, they'd hit, hit a roadblock sure. and fall back for a few months. And right. then somebody would say, well, here, we should make this contact with the FCC. And there were problems with Channel 6 back mm-hmm. when it was analog. Okay. You know, the, the television signals yeah. interfered and finding the right frequency. Mm-hmm. And then they do all this work to submit a proposal and get rejected. Oh. You know, then had a couple months to recover and try again. Yeah. <laughs> and then, it, you know, concurrent with the frequency and the FCC work was the location. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we have this permanent location yeah. is really great. But you weren't originally at that location at the firehouse. You they briefly... were right. Our our um our our transmitter is out in what we call Radio Ridge. Okay, it's out yeah, in yeah, the country. Yeah. yeah. So we own this little piece of property, and the transmitter is there. So when we were able to go on the air in '93, they broadcast from there. So okay, people yeah. were driving way out in the country into this little shed like a garage. Yeah. And broadcasting from there. Yeah, and that's up on the west side. So where is the actual location? So right the now. firehouse is part of Waldron, so it's right across from... It's not quiet over there is right now. Is that a firehouse? Wait, it, well, was. It, was. it was. It was. Okay. Yeah. So it's across from the parking garage that right. as of today is getting torn down. Right. Follow the noise. Yeah. And find the well, I've, all, I've always seen that there's that big Dalmatian dog that's yes. out there, mm-hmm. and then the sign for the radio station, but I never... I never knew that that was yeah. an actual firehouse. Yeah. So, yeah, it was originally. So how are you? Uh, and again, we're, we're recording this in September of 2019 where they, because someone might be listening, hopefully listening a couple of years from now, uh, yeah. and they're tearing down the parking garage to rebuild it on 4th Street. So how are you dealing with the noise and how are you able? Because I just saw somebody post on Facebook today a, a video of it and they were like, who knew tearing down a garage is super loud. Is, are you able to hear it yeah. in the studio? Well, the studio has got some soundproofing yeah. for sure. Yeah. But uh, when you walk into the studio, there's the main desk there. Yeah. It's pretty loud yeah. there. And in the offices. So yeah. I think some of our staff will be finding ways to like, work, work at home. the library. Yeah. That's far enough away. Oh, my gosh. They could... So what is the mission of WFHB? I can read it to you, Excellent. actually. Because I think, you know, mission statements can be kind of, but there's deep meaning in the, in, in the words, though. To provide an open community forum for the exchange and discussion of ideas and issues and to celebrate and increase the local cultural diversity. Okay. Which is interesting because what's that got to do with music? Well, everything in, in a lot of ways. But it's a community resource. Mm-hmm. And to acknowledge and celebrate, increase the local cultural diversity. An opportunity for people to be part of communicating with the community. Is it primarily music? It is. We uh, we have a balance between music and the news and public affairs programming, where it's a, it's more music. Okay, so it's like eighty twenty. I don't know exactly. It might be a little bit more because we have uh, we have music throughout the day. We air Democracy Now, which is a natural a national news program. Okay, and we have a lot of in house produced programming, daily local news. Yeah. And then we have several shows that deal with a lot of different concerns and issues. And I want to go over some of the specific shows, I think, in our segment two. Right Um, on. Yeah, because I've got a list of shows that I have questions about, too. Um, But I wanted to talk a little bit more about this idea of community radio and how are you different than... Um, are you different than WFIU and are you different than um, some of the for-profit radio stations? Right. Basically, the the FCC designated part for educational and community type radio stations. So it's not all commercial. Most radios is commercial radio. Yeah. So this more um, leaving this part of the band open mm-hmm. for educational purposes under that big, okay. big umbrella. And then under that, you get... Several kinds of stations, but basically you get your university-based or urban area-based NPR kind of stations. Maybe it's jazz and classical focus, Mm -hmm. but a lot of news and a lot of the national programs that Mm -hmm. they carry. And then there's there's Christian radio stations fall under that of being not nonprofit and Mm educationally-based, you know, with air quotes, is WFHB. (laughs) And then there's this other animal. There's others like us that's a community station. Mm -hmm. 
means it's for and by the community. And I, a lot of stations like ours have a very small staff and a lot of volunteers. So all the DJs are volunteers, all the news readers, all the people that you hear on the air for the most part, because we have a general manager, a music director, news director, and a couple of part-time positions. And that's it. No. And that's it. Wow. Yeah, we have over 100 volunteers. Wow. It wouldn't work. And, yeah. And this idea that people work together and successfully do these big projects over time, 25 right. years. And 24 hours a day, right? Yes. I mean, that's yeah. crazy to think about, too. So similar to CATS, I guess, in terms of community, but much more volunteer-driven. Right, right. And live on the air DJ for almost all of the time. Wow. Maybe some of the late night hours we have some pre-recorded things yeah interesting but yeah people so, on the microphone yeah so how did you come to get involved in wfhv i've always loved radio since i was a little kid i mean i grew up through those whole movements from am mm -hmm. to fm yeah and and when fm first started it had a certain free form kind of loose quality to it you know then it got more homogenized yeah and then i lived in boston for a while and they had some wonderful radio stations several that i really liked were university based but they kind of function as a community station mm -hmm. like longtime g djs that had been doing shows for many mm -hmm. years and, along with students and like this is really great and non-commercial mm -hmm. so you have underwriting which is just simply read you know on the air okay as opposed to bombastic commercial type things that right and how so is that majority of your funding comes from underwriting or do you do events to raise money because it seems like it takes a lot of money i would guess your budget's fairly in terms of the maintaining the technology right i mean our budget is primarily salaries the biggest yeah. percentage of yeah. it is because we have the space sure so that's a oh, great, that's nice. great feature um, we do two fund drives a year. We Underwriting, of course, is very mm -hmm. big. And when I looked at the other podcasts that you guys have done, mm -hmm. we have relationships with a lot of those places yeah. or have, if not yeah. currently through underwriting or through doing PSAs for the nonprofits. Yeah. Yeah. I, we there. did, so, um, last episode was Bloomington Playwrights Project. Oh, and I was yes. looking at who their major sponsor was like, done a show with them, done a show with them. <laughs> so, right. you know, it is a small community, but really supportive. And I think that, you know, the, the threads that stood out to me, um, really not knowing anything about WFHB story was one, just the perseverance to keep it, oh, you know, get it up and running and then keep it going for so long. But then also the partnerships. I always, I love the, when the nonprofits, you know, don't see each other as competitors, but see each other as you know partners. And, and I see that a lot with you too. Like yeah, I think that's very true. We want to we want to help everybody and be a platform that everybody can have a chance to participate. Yeah, and I think I, I feel the same way when it comes to radio that we have a great radio landscape here. WFIU, mm -hmm. WIUX at the university, yeah. and you know, a couple of some of the commercial stations I listen to. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like the more there is, the more you're into it. Yeah, you know, and the choices are there. Right. Well, you know, it's like a, a friend of mine who owns a restaurant and they say, you know, why do you want to partner with other restaurants? That, aren't they your competitors? And, it's, and they say, they're not going to eat my food every night of the week as right. much as I would like them to, you know. And so they're, you know, sometimes yeah. they're going to turn on WFHB and maybe it's not a program they would like to listen to. So it's good to have other strengths, um, other things to turn to so that we can keep the radio scene strong. Right. Do you feel like radio is like, I mean, how is the competition with obviously podcasting and all the things out there for right. people to listen to? How does that change what you all are doing or does it? It challenges us to, to participate in some of these other methods. Mm -hmm. You know, when radio started, then TV came along. Oh my God, there goes radio, you know, and all these, right. and radio has never died. It's almost, it's like the people's communication avenue mm -hmm. if you have a transistor radio or if you've got a car you've got a radio like yeah you don't have to pay right for the radio except for maybe a small device to right. get it or but it's there for everybody which is which is really great and because of technology now a lot of our programs can be archived mm -hmm. so they're available podcasts the and from yep. the website absolutely one of the questions i had and i don't know if you know the answer so i was writing these and i was like oh, i'm going to ask her some things and she may not know the answers to them so don't feel bad if you don't but i was just curious because i asked this question of cats when they were on 
Uh, is this something that's typical in communities? Do most communities have community radio stations, or is this? I can answer that. Okay, go for they it. They absolutely do not. Yeah. Okay. They don't. And um, I know that there's our environment is kind of one that can breed a community radio station. Mm-hmm. You have to be a, a town of a certain size, or maybe a university town yeah. where you've got the interested parties mm-hmm. to do it. A hundred volunteers so, or more a year <laughs> right, yeah, to keep so, you going. Right, so it's not the usual thing. I mean, there's places that I go to that I think of as radio deserts. Mm -hmm. They don't even have the NPR station, let alone something that's more local. Sure. So, and I love driving through parts of, you know, Kentucky where you just come upon a local, you can tell it's a local station. Yeah. There are local people talking about what's going on in that community and playing music. And And your neighbor's the one doing the commercial or whatever because, you know, it's local businesses. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So you had mentioned University Town certainly probably helps your case. Um, How much do you partner with IU? I think that Bloomington has a great, what they call town and gown relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, and I really credit Herman Wells mm-hmm. with kind of developing what that personality is for the university. There's not a big, you know, invisible wall between the two. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's really wonderful. And we definitely do partner with different groups at the university, the, 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 the media school for the journalism connections. Mm-hmm. We give students real experience, like create a story, write it read it on the air, you know, yeah. do the whole thing. Yeah. And also feeds us volunteers, too. Right. And that's really great. And we've partnered with the Asian um, American Center at IU for some programming on okay. Asian American issues. Okay. And, yeah, we definitely look to them for support. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's interesting to me um, – <coughs> Just that partnership, you know, we always hear people kind of complaining, oh, the students are coming back, and yet it makes us what we are. Or, you know, it gives us all these opportunities that we have. So we really need to continue to find ways to embrace and work with the university. Definitely, because I think there's so many opportunities for community members to take advantage of all the arts and yeah. culture and things right. that are going on that the university brings. Right. That it's sure. really, that's really a great thing. Awesome. When we come back from break, I want to talk about some of your specific uh, shows that you've got. I think you've got some that are kind of long running and regular yeah. um, and things like that um, and what people can expect. And maybe even you can tell us you know, what you think the one thing everybody should be listening to that they're not or something like that. I don't know. We'll uh-huh. see. Me. But, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about that. <laughs> All right, so stick around. You're listening to At Home in Bloomington. Hi, this is Karen Rastel with Ruoff Home Mortgage. Did you know there are low or no down payment options available? If you're interested in buying a home but not sure about your options, contact me today at 812-606-7653. Together, we'll make your dreams of home ownership come true. Ruoff Home Mortgage is an Indiana corporation licensed by the Indiana Department of Financial Institutions. This is not an offer for extension of credit or a commitment to lend. All loans must satisfy company underwriting guidelines, equal housing lender, NMLS number 141868. This is your Real Estate Realist, practical advice on buying and selling real estate based on my experience closing over 800 home sales. Got turned down for credit? Don't give up. As we like to say, every day you take a step in the right direction is a day closer to the reality of home ownership. Standing still just won't get you there. It's important to understand why you were turned down for a mortgage. So here are three questions you need to know the answers to before you walk away from the lender's office. Number one, is it credit score? Obviously, a large part of getting a mortgage is based on your credit score. Is it too low? What are some steps you can take to improve your credit? We have several podcasts about that. Number two, maybe your credit score is fine, but you are carrying too much debt. This is common today with so many carrying student loans. Debt won't always get you turned down, but it can have a significant impact on your purchasing power. You may only qualify for a low purchase price, which may be unrealistic in your market. But there are things you can do like paying down debt, receiving gift funds, or getting a cosigner. Number three, is the problem lender specific? Without getting too detailed, different lenders do have different rules, even for the same loan program. I always recommend getting a second opinion with a different lender before you give up. The most important thing is that you create a plan and you work it. Home ownership is possible. Maybe not tomorrow, but possibly next year, and it's a goal worth working towards. 
For more information on what to do when you get turned down for a mortgage, check out my Real Real Estate Today podcast number 42. You can find it on iTunes, YouTube, and my website, www.athomeinbloomington.com. My name is John Lee. Deb Tomorrow is my realtor. She has helped my wife and I sell two homes and purchase another. She's a smart, outside-the-box thinker and truly cares about her clients. Deb makes the complex world of buying and selling homes seem easy, which is a testament to her knowledge and skill. Long story short, Deb should be your realtor too. And now, back to the show. Hey, welcome back to At Home in Bloomington. Before we get back to our guest, Emily Jackson, who is a board director and a DJ at WFHB, I do want to throw back to... Um, one of our previous shows, and I honestly, we alluded to this in the first segment, had a hard time. I usually try and tie a show that we've done before to our current guest. Right. And there were a lot of them. Absolutely. I was like, oh, I could yep. do Cats. That's episode 41. Or I could do this. Or I could do that. But I settled on uh, Monroe County History Museum, which was episode 33 of At Home in Bloomington, where we talked with your old buddy, Andrea. I know, from my hometown. She's from your hometown. I was blown away. Not Bloomington, but they were both from no. the hometown, so they were swapping teach, you know, oh, science teacher stories or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, uh, they've they got a lot of interesting things going on at the museum that we talked about. I know right now they're doing a lot with um, Dementia Friendly um, and uh, programs like that, which are really, really cool. But I did not. We didn't talk about a program that they do with WFHB, which is Saturday's Child. Right. And what's that right. program about? That's one of our longest running programs. It's a live performance of music that audiences can come, and we have free coffee and bagels and cookies, and it's live on the air. And it's also ar- archived to go onto our website. But it, yeah, it's a, an hour of music, family friendly. And is it um, local? I assume local yeah, people. Yeah. Is it like bands or just a guy with a dulcimer? Or, it can be you know, all varieties. Anything. We had like a you know piano thing where two or three people were playing keyboards uh-huh. or yeah, not too loud rocking bands. No, but like yeah. So because Karen was asking over the break, like what kind of music is played on WFHB, and I don't know if it's easier to say what kind of music isn't played. Right. You know what? I would have to guess that what does not get much airplay is classical music. We don't have a program for that, and okay. it doesn't really get in the mix so much. But otherwise, you know, local and international and all all genres you can think of. And our schedule is purposely set up so through the day it's a music mix. Okay. Monday through Friday with the news break at the noon hour. But from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m., it's eclectic music mixes. And are they typically like hour-long blocks of same kind of music? A DJ does a two-hour show. Okay. So the DJ um, decides what to play with a few kind of guidelines. We have an ad pool, so new music gets some priority. You need Mm -hmm. to play a few songs from whatever genre, whether Mm -hmm. it's jazz or bluegrass or psychedelic, Mm -hmm. rock, singer-songwriter. So people can go on to the website, which is... Is it WFHB.org? That's right. All right. Uh, I just guessed, but look how smart I am. <laughs> you um, are so smart. I know, right? WFHB.org. And it, you can, it'll show like what shows are coming up for that evening if, you know, if you want to look for right, a right. specific genre and kind of program. Yeah, that we do is. have some genre shows. Um, mm-hmm. We have some jazz shows in the evening. And the weekend is a little bit more roots oriented. There's Roots for Breakfast, and The Dark End of the Street is like country and rhythm and blues on Saturday afternoon. Okay. And when the DJ's on the air, you can look at the website, and the playlist comes up live on oh, the nice. side banner. You can see, like, oh, well, who was that? I love yeah. that song. You can look up and see exactly cool. who it was. And all the playlists are archived. Okay. You can go back and look. And when when is your show? My show is a couple of Fridays a month. It's the second and fourth Friday, 6 to 8 a.m. Oh, my goodness. So get up early. early. I'll right? be on tomorrow morning. Awesome. <laughs> and what kind of stuff do you usually play? I, uh, I tend to be... Um, Americana, rhythm and blues mm-hmm. kind of stuff, some folk music. Mm-hmm. And because it's early morning, I don't rock out too hard. <laughs> but that might be a nice way to get the day started. Do, do, it is. Do, the, do the DJs in that block of time, do they give it a name? Do you call your, your two-hour block anything like the... No, some of our specialty show shows, or... yeah, some specialty shows have names, overnight <laughs> shows. and But it's, it's the daily, it's the music mix. 
Okay. Anyway, you know, we always identify who we are. I'm DJ yeah. EJ. Ah, there you go. Yeah. And I think you get to know certain personalities. Like within okay. the within those daytime mixes, one DJ might lean more towards jazz or mm-hmm. some might have a more interest in international music and still going to be a mix. Yeah. So you you know, you might hear a bluegrass song and then an Amy Lou Harris song and then cool. you know, a rock band. Yeah. Um and so do most DJs do just a couple shows a month? Most do one a week. That's one okay. way of doing it is one a week. Okay. I'm sort of every other week. Okay. So, so so since we're talking about volunteers, let's talk about you said that you use over a hundred volunteers to keep this running. So what are the volunteer opportunities that like normal people like Karen and I could potentially participate in and how can people find out about those opportunities? All right, I'll give the email. It's volunteer at WFHB.org. That's why you can connect to our volunteer coordinator. And we have a volunteer orientation the first Wednesday of every month at 630 okay. at the station. Okay. Um, and so you get an overview, a tour and an overview of how it all works. And then if you want to continue for on-air training, there's a avenue for that. Okay. Uh, one thing that's great is our desk jockey position. We like to have somebody answering the phone at the front desk. Mm-hmm. And so we like to have that filled from nine to five every day. Yeah. And it's not always completely filled, but we have some dedicated desk jockeys. So that's kind of a, that's a great way to get started. You get to know a lot of stuff. And if you're interested in the news department, you'd go that direction and get Mm -hmm. some training and sort of shadow and go along with until you learn more. We've done some great training for people that are, that want to know how to edit music or Mm work the recording board when we have a live band play. You can right. learn all kinds. There's a, what we call low barrier. You don't have to know anything when you come in, and we'll teach you everything. Well, and that's why it's really, certainly something we probably should have done before we just started podcasting. And, <laughs> as we time and time again prove our technology prowess. Um, but are there requirements for someone to be a DJ? Well, to go through the training, and, yeah. then, and then for there to be a slot open, we sure. should have a full schedule. I bet, yeah. So that we try to... Be able to encourage people by letting them buddy up with another DJ mm-hmm. or, or, or be available for filling. Substitute, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Because yeah. I think that would be, for some people, um, a way to kind of make a dream come true, you know, if they've always sort of dreamt about doing it and it isn't something that they can, you know, start over again in life and try to be a radio DJ. And it's probably not the most lucrative job either, but it's a really cool one and a fun one. Um, how do you research what you're going to put you know, how do you find new songs or what music, how do you put your playlist together? Well, um, as with, I think all radio stations, you get a lot of stuff in the mail. Oh, okay. And so our music director has connections with different labels and different uh, distributors. So we get lots of CDs and they get sorted through and put into what's called our ad pool. And CDs are in there for like a month, probably. And so this is all great new music. And then all of those CDs are the links are sent out to all the DJs so that you could do a little research mm-hmm. if you want to. And all the CDs are reviewed. I think that's what makes the system work. So you, you grab a CD and oh, this, oh, Emmylou Harris has a new album mm-hmm. and somebody has written a description of what's going on here. Mm-hmm. And then they'll say recommended tracks. Okay. Four, seven and nine. And that's one of the volunteers and, has done listen yeah, to that. Okay. Yeah. And so then you know that those are the one, or and also it lists like if the label is pushing mm-hmm. to sing a certain one, and it'll say FCC violation because some CDs have bad words in them. Have bad words in them, so FCC like you know, yeah, you cannot play those tracks yeah. on the air. And then, um, so you listen to those, and then just because of your base of knowledge and having done this for a long time and being a music lover, you'll have other ones. You're like, Oh, I want to play that one. Yeah. And it's really fun for me. My style is to kind of mix it while I'm doing it. Okay. Like I'll do some previews and have a pile that I've previewed and then I'll play them. I'll be like, Oh yeah, that, this would follow that really nicely. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. That's so live mixing. Very fascinating to me oh, how yeah. you do it. Cause it's a little on the fly, which seems like it it's can exciting. Be. Some people <laughs> like that. I like it. Yeah. It is exciting. And some people really do a lot of homework. Yeah. And in, in terms of, you know, writing out exactly the songs they're going to play mm-hmm. for two hours. So do the majority of the, the music that is mailed in or sent into the station, is it from labels or can, like if, if Deb, you know, we know she secretly sings at home and <laughs> was in show choir. If she wanted to put together something. Absolutely. 
um, and send it in. <laughs> that will never happen. Right. People can but, walk in the door with their CD and say, can this... Awesome. Yeah. Get considered. And then we have a section of coming to town. So, uh-huh. Oh, yeah. So okay. we choose from those to put on the air, too. So we support all the venues that are having sure. music in town and stuff that's going on at IU, too. We'll get yeah. in there. And I have to mention the Lotus Festival. Yeah. Here. Yeah, because we're coming up on that yeah. this weekend, right? And so... Mm-hmm. Starting today, the DJs are playing exclusively Lotus bands. Oh, wow. So it's a great preview opportunity. Yeah. So I'll be playing all Lotus music tomorrow So morning. the music director is sort of in charge of making, keeping those themes going and making sure everybody's sort of on track. And Yeah. yeah. Within their, the freedom that the DJs yeah. have. Right. That, yeah. Which is interesting because I think that is another thing that makes you different from, the, obviously, mm-hmm. the commercial because I don't think the DJs have much um, freedom in terms of what they play. And a lot uh, of times, nothing is live on the air. Yeah. They'll record it for something that's going to go yeah. on the air 10 minutes later. Right. They just don't do it that way. Right. Yeah. So you're saying WFHB <coughs> being live, having a lot of live DJs and live shows. So you'll hear that interesting little, oh, wait a minute, what happened? Yeah. I, I know, that. please. <laughs> I, I know, know I know. We, fix it or, you know. When we were doing our uh, old podcast um, several years ago, I would have an engineer in my ear and we were going live and he would say, you know, you're live right now. And I'm like, yeah, yeah talk amongst yourselves because I was thrown <laughs> off by something. I was like, I got to find my place, you know, and it's like, oh, it's live. You know, what are you going to do? But so, I like it. I like, you know, it gets rid of that, that, I don't know, the fallacy of perfection that that's yep. not the way life is. You but know? you know what Karen and I say, anything worth doing is worth doing badly. No, the, no, the, the thing is. The perfect is the enemy of the good. There you go. Right. That too. That too. Oh, I had one more thing I wanted to mention when you're talking about volunteers is that we have really um, strong relationships with Ivy Tech and IU and some high schools for interns. Oh, fun. Which has been great. High school interns too. I'm so glad that we have that connection. And some work study through Ivy Tech. Okay. Those are really, really helpful. And through IU, there's a program that we have what's called a Cox Scholar. Okay. And that person, starting their sophomore year, they are connected to a nonprofit for the rest of their college career. Oh, nice. So the same person for three oh, years. Oh, wow. It's really great. Yeah. And then so. you also work closely with the City of Bloomington Volunteer Network as Thank well. Thank you. Yes, for saying that. Lucy Shake, they're very, very helpful. We air volunteer opportunities, mm-hmm. and she is getting more involved in helping us with our volunteer management because she's got such great experience. But that kind of relationship with the city is yeah. really, really great because they're presenting these volunteer opportunities, and they need to get the word out. Yeah, it's the, I think it's sort of that web of community throughout, and it's not just the music community, it's not just the nonprofit community, it's not just connecting with IU, but it's this very intricate web. I, I, yeah, I think it's kind of cool yeah. if you if you kind of did a I have I have a visual of an art project but I'm not an artist but like looking down on the city and sort of starting to connect everything the web would be so you know all these lines would make this really intricate right, web right. which and is you really know, cool and that's what I think is it's what makes community I think that we have to create it and look for it and appreciate it like. You know, you have a job and you make your money. Then you spend your money and live your life a certain way. But not everything is like the monetary base, mm-hmm. the meaning and the – and because I – it's something that I learned, too, is like, what well, people do all this work and they're not paid for it. Yeah. It's like, well, that's not what it's, you know. About. You have to get away from that even kind of way of thinking mm-hmm. that we, we're all working together to make it a better place to live. And right. And helping make all these community connections. So anybody can – I think Bloomington's great for that because you can very easily volunteer for the Playwrights Project. Sure. And you can be involved in theater or right. you can help out with the many service organizations that are just so happy to have volunteers come and help yeah. with what they're doing and help the community. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I almost dated a guy once and he said to me, I was doing a lot of volunteering it 20 years ago, and he said, you know, well, I don't volunteer. My time is worth something. And I was like, oh, yeah, you don't get it. Okay. Gotta go. I know, yeah. See ya. And it's, yeah. <laughs> but I think once you get it, you really see, like, this makes all of our lives better. I mean, yeah. I get a lot of very positive energy from right. being involved in the radio station. Yeah, I would imagine there are things that I do, like this podcast, and I may go in uh, and start sort of feeling like I'm out of energy that day. And I, I would imagine you're probably like that, you know, 6 o'clock in the morning, you're kind of like, uh, but by the end, it's probably like... You know, by the end of your show, you've got energy and you're feeling positive and it just, you know, because you know you're putting something out positive out. You're sending positive vibes out in the community. Yeah. That's kind of cool. 
Um, let's talk about a couple of the other shows. We talked okay. about Saturday's Child, which was a show I wanted to touch on. And I wanted to touch on the Firehouse Follies because I think that's a, is that sort of a pillar of <laughs> some of the programming? That is a great, great program. And um, the next one is December 1st. Is and it once a quarter? Yes, once a quarter, yeah. Radio theater with uh, both local and often out-of-town musicians as part of it. So they do this radio theater play. They have little skits within there and then musical performances. And we do it at the the Waldron Auditorium. Okay. So it's a nice big crowd there and when to is, watch it live. Is it usually in the evenings? It's so Saturday like evening? Four to evening? six. Okay. On a Sunday. Oh, Okay. Yeah, and uh, of course, sound effects are a big part of that too. Ah, like the old yeah. radio days. Exactly, like an old time footsteps. Old... Do, 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 do. Right, exactly. Yeah. And he's got a big door, so we can shut yeah. the door and get the sound of it. And so, so uh, each one is stands alone, like it's not a, a running theme. But there's a story, right. and then but there's also music involved. Yes, yes, and sometimes the the songs are kind of going along with the plots, or it's just we have performers that come from out of town mm. that play. And we have the Firehouse Rounders is the band. That comes and performs, oh, and the Gospel Girls. Uh-huh. They started out as just um, WFHB singers, yeah, and then they, they continue on beyond okay. just playing for the Follies. And then yeah. those yeah. shows are also past episodes are available, right? I think on the website now, so you can listen and see what it's all about, and then uh, make a date to go see it live, right? And some on cast. I don't know if they were all archived oh, okay. cast, but there are some available that you can watch as well. Okay. But it's great because you know you can stay at home and listen on the radio. You can come down yeah. and watch it, which people say is really it's exciting, more exciting. Yeah, come down and see it. Um, and what other what are other shows that you want to tell people about? I have this big list. I so, know, and so I, I had to get, just like pick out a few, but go, I want to give a few shout outs. Though, yeah, definitely, please. Um, I mentioned the the show called Hereabouts, which is connected with the Asian American Midwest Radio Group. Okay. Hijab Diaries is with the Islamic Center of Bloomington. We've partnered with them for nice. a half an hour show. Uh, is Brad, that about issues or is that it's kind of whatever music it's kind of whatever. issue? Yeah, a little like bit of music, cultural little bit of, okay. information, okay. And perspectives. Sure, which would be great for people community. to listen to. Yeah. Yeah. Brown County Hour is another. That's really great. Our connection to Brown County is very strong, and we have a, a big group over there. And that is also news and information and updates about um, what's happening with logging in the area. Okay. They bring that up, and then they have some music pieces, too. Is that a weekly show? That's um, that's once a month. Okay. And it's very Brown County personality, Nashville sort of mm-hmm. down-home storytelling yeah. in there. Yeah. That's really – we can – we uh, – Partnered with the county for the Bicentennial Journal, okay, which were bicentennial spots in the history of Bloomington. Mm-hmm. We yeah. have pins for that. Do you remember? Yes. Our, very, our very first podcast of At Home in Bloomington oh. was with um, Paula McDevitt of the Parks and Rec, and we talked about Sweetshire Park, and she oh, brought yeah. us Bicentennial yes. pins, and we were so excited. We were like, Mine's these right are awesome. My yep. oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And we have a number of programs a, what we call the public affairs programs, Bring It On, African American Affairs, mm-hmm. Blooming Out, Gender Issues, mm-hmm. um, Better Beware is a short piece, Consumer Advocacy, mm-hmm. and, you know, a lot about people getting scammed. Right. And the whole, they could do, there's a lot of shows about that. Interchange is usually a discussion with someone in the community or kind of sometimes through IU mm-hmm. about like politics or like bigger issues. Okay. Bigger view. And are most of these once a month shows or more There's often? A, a lot of them are once a week. Okay. Yeah. But again, go to WFHB.org and it kind of will show the schedule and help you find those right. episodes and also listen to past episodes because I'm yeah. sure especially some of the ones that are issue driven, it's like, oh, I'd like to have heard that. And now you can. Right. Kind of like five to seven is the news and information okay. block. And then after that, music. Back to music. Yes. Interesting. And one more, I got to say. Yep. Local live every Wednesday, bands come and play live, oh. and then they get a CD of what they have played, and it's aired live, and those are archived, awesome. and Lotus, too. We have Lotus mm-hmm. performers come into the studio. So I don't want you to play favorites, but play favorites. What's one or two programs that you think people really should be listening to? Well, I have a special place in my heart for a couple programs Youth Radio, Saturday night. Mm-hmm. That's It's the most creative, open forum kind of program we have. And the 
the high school kids and yeah. they do it. They run it. Uh-huh. And we have a staff or a volunteer staff person who coordinates. It started through Rhinos. Yeah. And the Rhinos Youth Center was mm-hmm. there. And it, but it's continued on, even though that you know, yeah. physical center is. So I think that is really, really great. They tell great stories. They play great music. They make really interesting, have interesting conversations and testimonials. First, Which the, could be a good thing for parents to listen to, I too, maybe really to get inside the head of a teenager a little <laughs> bit more. Mm. And we also have Golden Age Radio mm-hmm. that's on Thursdays from 9 to 11. And that's just, you know, that's this really nice niche for people who, who are older and it's it's of a certain area, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, gotcha. the golden age of American music. Yeah. I think that that's a really special program. Too. And we learned through, see, I keep turning back to another, really? uh, well, Jill's house yeah. um, oh, yeah. uh, and some of their dementia programs, but yes. they, and they're what they had. And I don't remember the details, so forgive me, but go back and listen to that episode and you'll hear all the details because uh, there was an IU professor um something with music and using mm, music yes. to sort of bring these people with dementia out of it for a while as oh, they yeah. listen to the music and they're able to, you know, remember the words and sing along and you sort of see a different light in their eyes. So that's really, really cool. And I know the History Center is doing some things with similar. So, yeah, I'll connect. Right. I listened to part of that. I was yeah. sampling some of your yeah. podcasts about the, the, yeah. the suitcases. Yep. Like yep. Really that program. Neat. Yeah. 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 Really cool awesome. Stuff, so. awesome. So WFHB.org to um, see what their schedule is. And on the dial, on the radio dial. 91.3, okay. 98.1. Because of the downtown kind of likes 98.1 better, but with the general yeah. Bloomington area. Okay. 91.3. Awesome. So you can tune in there as well. Um, and then and I have to mention Ellettsville and Nashville. We have frequencies there. Oh, great. Too. Okay. Yeah. And tell us again, the um, email address for volunteers. Thank you so much. Volunteer at WFHB.org. The first Wednesday of the month at six thirty. For just the show up, just show up, or you can contact mm-hmm. volunteer Email. coordinator ahead of time. Awesome, and get involved. Uh, it's a really cool resource. I know there are people out there that have, uh, you know, underground radio dreams that they want to fulfill, and this might be a great way to get involved and do that. Thank you so That's much right. for joining us today. I appreciate it. I know that I learned a lot. I think Karen probably would agree. Um, that we probably didn't know as much as we should about WFHB, and now we do. Absolutely. That's awesome. great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you for listening. We'll be back. You are at home in Bloomington. Got a show idea? I'd love to hear it. And be sure to contact me for all your real estate needs and questions, too. You can email me at deb at realrealestatetoday.com and follow me on Facebook at Deb Tomorrow Realtor. To contact Karen Rastel for all your mortgage needs, call 812-606-7653 or log on to Ruoff.com and go to the Bloomington Center. Thanks to all the Bloomington people who make production of At Home in Bloomington possible. Special thanks to superstar producer Rachel Gregorio, digital guru Cynthia Hogan at Monster Digital Marketing for website design and hosting, and video genius Wes Lasher in the production house for engineering the show.